website. Yeah, yeah. It's under the Roden Solution Executive Summary, and there's a PDF that can be downloaded. Yeah, it's like 60 pages long, and it's really uh, uh, in-depth and, and detailed, so I would and in, you can encourage see people to look at that. The pictures was done by Jean-Louis Nodden of JLN Labs, and he energized my coil, and he took pictures that everybody said it was doing the impossible because it was making such a strong magnetic spiral inductance arms. <laughs> And what's causing everything to spiral is this linear, non-bending emanation that emanates from the center that no one's been able to observe except with this mathematics or tap into, except, again, using this geometry. All right. Now, and, and, and before, there, there are a couple other things I want to ask you about because we, we touched on it earlier with regard to this. There, there's been an ongoing question, and one of the major questions that's been unanswered in physics has been the question of spin. And... How is it maintained? I mean, this, the, the idea that, um, that space is a vacuum is really a nebulous one. We know that space really isn't a vacuum, and we know that the space uh, around an atom isn't a vacuum either. So there's a, at least a certain amount of resistance there. So why do electrons continue uh, to spin and don't just, you know, don't just run down, for example? Is this the answer to that, Marco? In other words, is this where that energy is derived from that keeps them going? Uh, I'll take it one step further. If you were to take this energy away, the universe would instantly become destitute and void. It, so it is. I mean, so, so in other words, the metaphor of God call it, is a real You could call it literally the, the light of the face of God. You could call it dark matter. You could call it spirit. You can call it a monopole. Hmm. But the trick is, is that I figured out how to create a way to observe it. I call it, and it's a a play on words, I call it a mathematical interferometry or a mathematical diffraction grading. Can I go in a, um, a, a direction for a second? Yeah, please. There's a thing that um, I know we're speaking and maybe uh, hopefully a few college students are listening um, while they're maybe doing their homework or something. Um, oh, I'm sure they are. Just, yeah. Everybody takes for granted the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Heisenberg and per certainty principle is not all conclusive, as everybody thinks. Well, and let's, and let's clarify that real fast. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle basically said that you never really know where an electron is until you, you know, look at it. If you know, that's right. Because if you know the present position, then you've affected it and you've def deflected it from its future position. So right. you can't know any two positions simultaneously. Okay. I totally obsolete that. The basis of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle was that it was invasive, what you were observing it with, be it light in the electron microscope, and ah, it, it would, yes, and you it had, would jump a valiance ring because the electron absorbed that light. Right, right. You, had to, you, you actually had an effect on the experiment that you were observing. The reason is, is because the mathematics used today, they didn't believe it was possible to predict absolutely anything because the math today is made on a man-made contrivance, whereas the math that I use is based on absolutes, is based on fixed constants, which do exist in the universe. So instead of using conventional mathematics, I've, in, I've found literally, we've always said that mathematics is the language of God. I literally, literally found the, the mathematical relationship where in this Taurus that I do, I piece numbers together in such a mosaic, such a jigsaw puzzle, puzzle that there is not one mathematical function or calculus known to man that isn't encompassed in this model. If nothing is omitted and there is no redundancy. If there was, the whole thing would be obsolete. That's why Russell Blake says that I have perfect mathematical coherence and regularity, that I have a perfect model on the 3D, and that's why he says then, of course, I'm able to go higher dimensional, 4D and up, and see the interior and volume of a torus. There's no mathematics today that is able to go on the z-axis like this, this right. mathematics right. can. And, and by the z-axis, you mean by going internally inside that torus? Correct. Right. Whew. Okay. Because I discovered that numbers are real. Right. In other words... And well, nature is expressing herself with numbers. Nobody ever would have, in their wildest fantasy, ever attributed anything to numbers themselves. Yeah, and, and let, let's talk about that a little bit, about numbers as things. In other words, you know, we have... And, and, and you can talk about language a little bit and how that's involved in it, but what do you mean when you say numbers are real things that have a life of their own? I discovered, and, and this is a little wordy if I haven't already been extremely wordy, that numbers are stationary vector interstices, that they're nodes. I found that the z-axis creates all numbers. Um, 
using the toroid map and mapping over the skin, we can take any number and we can map what I call harmonic cascadence. We're actually, actually able to show all the properties of physics as they occur over this torus map, such as communicated agitation, waves. In other words, numbers were not fragments, um, disjointed, isolated from one another. Numbers weren't separate. I was able to take numbers, piece them together, and to a puzzle like a mosaic, and they make the entire picture of the, the panorama of the entire universe. That Because everything's based on the same model, from ad infinitum to micro. Um, and again, it's, it's, these, it's, it's the six-number progression, one, two, four, eight, seven, five, that literally everything else unfolds from that. There's actually, there's one other pattern. There's actually ah, two. Yes. It's a little tricky to explain. There's the binary code 124875 that's polarized, so it has polarity. There's two. One goes in the opposite direction of the other. And then the other numerical pattern, which is very profound, which is probably the most significant, which is the 396693. All right, and I think that that is one that we will tackle uh, in just a couple minutes at the top of the hour, okay? So let's do that, okay, Marco? We'll take a little break here, and we'll come back, and we will talk about uh, this. Can I, can I throw a quick boomerang? Sure. You're always so accommodating, and I, I couldn't have a better host. I appreciate it. Ah, no, I mean, that's the, the, the idea here is for you to have an open forum where you can lay this out as well as you can do in the time that we've got for you, because I know it's not always that easy, and I'm just trying to, just trying to accommodate you. So. Well, you know, I like...